Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Ebsen, also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Bradford Dillman, Robert Hogan, special guest star William Conrad, tonight's episode, Requiem for a Son. Frank, Hal Jones. Oh, Hal, how are you? Uh, look, I've got a problem. Yeah, what's wrong? Look, uh, we're buddies, right? Uh, in, a, in the same business. I need some professional advice. Uh, where are you? In a phone booth. Look, I've got myself into one hell of a jam trying to help out a client. May I talk to you in confidence? Sure. Now with the phone. You know, I'm only a few minutes away. Well, look, uh, I just put a spinach souffle in the oven. Why don't you come up here and share it with me, huh? I'll be right up. Okay. Thanks, Frank.
that you? Who is this? Oh, this is Frank Kennett. Who am I talking to? This is Hal's father, Mr. Cannon. Hal's dead. He was killed last night. Oh, Mr. Jones, I... Uh, give me a minute, William. Why were you calling? Um... Well, Hal called me last night. What time? Oh, I guess it was about a quarter to twelve. From a payphone, he said that he was in some kind of trouble. What kind? He didn't say. He just said he wanted to talk to me, and I told him to come on up to my place. He said he'd be right over. I'll be right over. Uh, no, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Are, are the police there? They're here. Then why don't we meet at Hal's office before they get there? I'm on my way. All right. She's uh, going to rest now. How are you feeling? Angry. Betty, listen to me. I've got to go out for a while. Mrs. Brenner will be here with you. I'll be back soon. Please. Please. Keep the press away from her. tell you how he valued your friendship. What did he say to you last night? Oh, not much more than what I told you, that he'd gotten himself into trouble trying to help a client. Client? Yeah, and he wanted to talk to me in confidence. Did he say where he was? Just a few minutes away, he said. Griffith Park. He was shot down in the phone booth he was calling me from. like an old friend. And there are not many of them left. <laughs> Four years ago, when I retired, I calculated I had lived exactly half my life out of this office. Hal used to love this place. He used to come here as a boy, worked his way through USC, he used to study here at night. Been in there at my desk, sometimes right in here. Oh, I used to give him some help now and then. Chemistry, clinical psychology, forensic medicine, criminology. Those are my specialties, you know. I know. When I turned the business over to Hal, he didn't change a thing. Barnaby. I'd like your permission to take on this case. I'd consider it a personal score to find the man who killed your son. That's very generous of you, Cannon, but uh, this is something for me to do. Here's another old friend. Only had to use it once in 28 years. Look, Barnaby, I'm going to be blunt with you. You have been in retirement for four years now. You said that yourself. Yes, but the old reflexes still sharp as a colt's. You ever work with horses, Cannon? <laughs> Only the $10 window don't remind me of it. What about Hal's wife? I suppose she's going to be needing your help now. Yes, I thought of that. But the more I think of Betty, the more resolved I am to get this man myself. Cannon, you may be the best in the business, but uh, 
I did all right for myself for 28 years, and Hal was my son. Okay. Which isn't to say that I might not need your help. What case was Hal working on, do you know? No, I doubt if we'll find out here. He was as uncomplicated as I was. He carried everything in his head. Evidently, he went to a party the night before last Thursday. Somebody by the name of Terry. Terry McCormick. Terry McCormick. That's the lawyer who's running for Congress, huh? Uh, Hal did some work for him a couple of years ago on an industrial espionage case. McCormick has kept him on retainer ever since. Ever heard of a girl by the name of Karen Armsby? No, what's this? Yesterday's newspaper says there that she worked on McCormick's staff. So, on uh, behalf of uh, my campaign co-workers and myself, I'd like to say that we're uh, deeply gratified to learn that we've moved ahead in the polls. Let me ask a question, Mr. McCormick. Some commentators attribute your surging popularity to your free spending campaign style. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Russell, let me say this. I have uh, contributed considerable resources of my own to this campaign, but I believe that my exposure has not uh, communicated my personal means to the voters as much as it has my spirit of commitment. I think that that should do it, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you very much. See you all in Washington, I hope. Uh, Mr. McCormick. I'm sorry, I have a heavy schedule this afternoon. I'm uh, Hal Jones' father. Uh, please, come into my office. I don't want to be disturbed. All right. I will be off for today, ladies and gentlemen. One more. One more. Most of your questions will be answered in this press release, so please take one on your way out. I only heard the news on my car radio as I was driving in. I can't tell you how shocked I was. All of us who knew Hal felt so yes, strongly. Yes, uh, everyone liked him. Almost everyone. I don't want to take too much of your time, Mr. McCormick. Don't you worry about my time, sir. Here, please, come sit down. And tell me if there's anything at all that I can do for you. Yes. Yes, you might be able to help me a great deal. You see, I'm investigating Hal's murder. When was the last time you saw Hal? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, he came to a party at my house uh, in Malibu last Thursday night. Really? Big party? I don't suppose there were more than uh, 25 or 30 people. It started out as a... I get together for some of the members of my campaign staff, and it just grew. It's fortunate that uh, my wife and children are in Aspen visiting her parents. Was he alone? Hal, yes. What you're asking me, uh, was he working for me? Well, the answer is yes again, but I, I don't understand because it was just uh, campaign security. Were you having problems? No, not at all. I invited Hal simply to meet the other members of my staff. I, uh... I wonder if it would be possible for me to have a list of the other guests who attended the party? Certainly. I'll have my secretary make out a list for you this afternoon. Well, here's my card, in case you want to get in touch with me for any reason. And uh, thank you very much for your time, Mr. McCormick. Please call me Terry, sir. If you stop calling me, sir. <laughs> I forgot to offer my condolences to you on the death of the young lady who was working for you. Karen Armsby. Well, good luck on your campaign. Check at what time we're supposed to be at the station. Would you let me know? Okay, Terry.
How'd you know it was me? You have a rather distinctive silhouette. <laughs> I talked to uh, Terry McCormick today. He said Hal was at the party, but that's all. Here's a list of the other people. Karen Armsby was there, too. He played it close to his vest about her. Awful close. Hmm. Two people at the same party, both not dead. One murdered, the other suicide. One day apart. Can you make a connection? What, do you question the suicide? I question everything. Of course, the medical examiner's report is pretty conclusive. She swallowed a whole bottle of barbiturates. That could kill her in 15 minutes. Yeah, it must have been some lousy party. And a long ride home for her, too. That's what bothers me. Who took her home? Or did she drive herself? I think I'm going to check her place out. You got anything else? Just the ballistics report on Hal. Slug from a 38. How did you happen to find her at 10 o'clock in the morning? I was returning her keys. What key? The car keys. Her car had been in the shop for a week. Hmm. They just brought it back. The driver left the keys with me. I always put things away for Karen. She said I was like a mother to her. And somebody else drove her Thursday night, huh? I don't know if it was one of them. She had lots of bows. I didn't see her Thursday night. Um, uh, can I keep these for a little while? Don't know what good they're going to do her now. With all that attention, why do you think she did it? Yes. All right, I'll take it. Hello? I could have killed you today. That was just a warning, Mr. Candidate. Who is this? Where were you last night? We had a date, remember? At the Griffith Park Observatory? You think I was kidding or something? I kid you not. You need a little push, maybe. Like next time I try your side of the windshield. I got something better. I've got Karen's suicide note right here in my hand. What are you talking about? Oh, it's a real valentine. Like how you were going to divorce your wife and marry her. But you lied. I'd be glad to give you a copy. I had several made up this morning for the newspapers. But I'm keeping the original just for you. What do you want? You've got a very short memory. The same as before, 100,000 in 20s. Have the money ready and be at your phone at 11 tonight. <laughs> what I've been afraid of for years. He always said, oh, honey, <laughs> they don't shoot people like me. The worst I'll ever get is a traffic ticket or a punch in the face. I know. I used to say the same thing myself. Oh, I have got to do something. Let me fix you a cup of coffee. 
I guess I could do with a glass of milk. Betty, I've been thinking, why don't you come out to the ranch for a few days? Been kind of lonely for me out there. Well, I guess we're both going to need someone to take care of us. Or someone to take care of. I know. Let me think about it. Well, while you're thinking, I'm going to make you a promise. I promise that I'm going to get the man that killed Hal. The same thing will happen to you. No, he wasn't prepared for it. I am. It makes all the difference. I can't stop you. Hal was the same way. Have you any idea what he was up to? I didn't think so. What about that party he went to Thursday night? Terry McCormick's? Did he say anything about it? No. He acted strange the next morning. Strange? Oh, moody. Like something was on his mind. We were going to the ball game in the afternoon. He forgot all about it when Terry called. Terry called him Friday? Yes. I know they met in Hal's office that afternoon. Did he say where he was going Friday night? Same thing he always said. I'm going to meet a client. I'll get it. Hello? Well, I'm glad I reached you. What about? I think I have something which uh, may help in your search. I'm listening. Can you come to my house? It's Rocky Point Cove, Pacific Coast Highway. I'll be there. Betty. I have to go out for a while. Oh, where? I'm going to meet a client. China. All that water and nothing else between China and us. There she lies, sleeping giant. Let her sleep. For when she wakes, she will shake the world. You know who said that? John Foster Dulles? Napoleon Bonaparte. Ah. <laughs> Here. Oh, uh, no, thank you. What's your opinion? Of Napoleon? The Chinese. Are you asking me as a politician or as myself? Aren't they one and the same? Well, the point I'm about to make is uh, about the Chinese. Some of our politicians seem to have learned a lesson from them. You never know whether they mean what they say. One truth concealing another. Jones, I'd like to hire you. Why don't you start by telling me everything you can that'll help me catch my son's killer? Hal was killed by the uh, same man who's blackmailing me. And you weren't entirely truthful with me this morning. No. Why? The blackmailer took a shot at me this noon in the garage of my office building. And you saw the man? No, no, I didn't. I, I ducked, naturally anticipating another shot which never came. And by the time I looked up, he'd gone. You think he's trying to kill you? No. It was a warning shot. Because he called me at my office early this afternoon to threaten me again. Unless I come up with uh, more money. How much money does he want? Another hundred thousand dollars. Another hundred thousand? Tell me, Mr. McCormick, why are you being blackmailed? I'm a married man, Jones. The past few months, I've uh, been having...
having an affair with Karen Armsby. Karen, uh, oh yes, that's the young lady that... Uh... Yes, that's the one. And she was here on Thursday night, in fact. This is where she killed herself. Well, the newspaper said that her body was found in her apartment. It was, because Hal and I took it there. You see, I discovered a body about midnight, lying in my bedroom. I couldn't believe it. She was lying there with that empty pill bottle beside her. Anyway, I went out, I locked the door, I went and told Hal. We waited for the guests to leave, which was about one o'clock in the morning. And then we took Karen and the pill bottle back to her place. Could I uh, trouble you for a glass of milk? I see you're a sailor, too. Understand me, Jones. Hal didn't want to do it. In fact, I'm ashamed to say I, uh, I had to lie to him. I told him that uh, I'd never had an affair with Karen, that she uh, was simply a lovesick political groupie with a history of emotional problems, which is true, and that her suicide in this house would wreck my career, wreck my marriage. It would make it look as if we really had been having an affair and that I'd tried to reject her, which was also true. Anyway, uh, that's why Hal finally decided to help me. Because he trusted me. And because he believed in my political future. You mean you brought the girl all the way out here to reject her? No, no, she came with uh, an actor friend. I'm not sure which. The place was full of Hollywood types that night. Well, wouldn't the person that brought her have stayed to take her home? I don't know. People were coming and going all evening. How did all this get Hal killed? Well, uh, we didn't know it at the time, but uh, obviously someone must have seen Karen's body in my bedroom before I did. Either that or they saw us carry her out. Anyway, I received this at noon on Friday. It's a demand for $100,000 to be delivered to the parking lot of the Griffith Park Observatory at midnight. So you hired Hal to go after the blackmailer? No, no, he was only supposed to deliver the money. But you think he tried to catch the man? Why else would the man have killed him? Where's your car? It's parked in the lower driveway. It lodged in the passenger headrest. Mind if I hang on to this a while? Not at all. What are you going to do with it? I'm not entirely sure right now. Have you any idea who this man is? No, he told me simply to expect his call at 11 tonight. So you want me to do what you think Hal was trying to do? Yes, I want you to catch this man. He's Hal's killer. You said you're out to get him, and uh, neither one of us wants the police to do this job for us. McCormick, I don't want you to think that I approve of your morals. In fact, I wouldn't even vote for you. But if you can help me catch my son's killer, I'll be happy to oblige. How can you eat those things? I can eat anything. As long as I can wash it down with a glass of cold milk. <laughs> you know, I can believe the suicide part of Terry's story. I can even believe Hal's part in it. He was always fiercely loyal to his clients. But I just can't see him going as far as helping to pay off a blackmailer. Maybe he didn't. What do you mean? Maybe that's why he called me that night. Maybe he'd gotten himself into something he didn't like and he couldn't go through with it. But why kill him? Well, maybe he saw the blackmailer, like Terry said, and he was going to try to take him. Or maybe the blackmailer thought that Hal was calling the police. Maybe a lot of things. 
We could sit here and why and maybe ourselves to death. But I'm taking that phone call with Terry tonight at 11 o'clock. I'm interested in finding out who's going to be on the other end of that line. Party guests? Yeah, a couple of them. A couple of Karen's other boyfriends. Uh, see, it's Reed and Marshall. Their name's on the party list. Reed Carpenter and Marshall Eaton. They're both actors. Their addresses are on the backs of the pictures. Oh, we don't have much time. Why don't you take one and I'll take the other? Okay. You know, Barnaby, I would love to thank you for this wonderful lunch, but, uh, <laughs> but I just don't have it in me. Sure. I was there, but I didn't take care. I mean, I took some. What about Karen? Uh, this is a friend of Hal Jones, Donna. How do you do? What's he asking you about Karen for? Oh, come on. He's talking to everybody who was at McCormick's party. Some coincidence you take me to a party where she's at. I didn't even know she was going to be there. Reed took her. Reed Carpenter? Yeah. She didn't care any more about Reed than I do. She probably conned him into taking her because it was McCormick's party. She was freaky for McCormick. I don't imagine that pleased Reed too much, huh? Pleased him? They, they had an argument that night. Reed walked out. Who took her home? Well, she always found somebody. The girl is dead, Donna. Well, I know how that breaks your heart, lover. <clears throat> well, Mr. Eaton, perhaps you better go back and finish your <clears throat> shower. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter? Yeah? I thought I recognize you. You know, I watch your show every week. Well, it's not the greatest part in town, but at least it's a running role. I think you're pretty good. I really do. And I'm tough on those cop shows. You see, uh, I'm sort of one myself. Cop? Private. Might have asked you a few questions. Uh, about what? Hal Jones. I'm his dad. But he was just... That's what I'm trying to find out about, asking some of the people who saw him last, like that party Thursday night. Well, McCormick's party. Yeah, I was there. Not for very long, though. You remember seeing Hal? Yeah, I saw him. Remember anything else about him? Well, to tell you the truth, I, uh, I don't remember much. Uh, you see, I didn't stay too long. He left early? The girl I took wanted to stay a little longer. Oh, yes, uh, that's right, uh, Miss Armsby. You must have been terribly shocked. I was. And I wasn't. How do you mean? Well, uh, I knew she was headed for trouble. I just didn't know it happened that fast. You mean you knew she was going to kill herself? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, another man. You better believe it. Somebody that was there that night? The host. Oh, yeah. I've, uh, I've heard that rumor myself. Uh, here, have a mint. They're good. Well, say, since uh, you left early, I guess you wouldn't know how she got home. What does my leaving early have to do with Hal Jones? You're absolutely right, Mr. Carpenter. Not a thing. Unless... Unless what? You think there could be a connection? Listen, Dad, why do you keep bugging me with your questions? Because your answers get better and better. As your manners get worse and worse. This is my floor. Any more questions? I think you've answered them, Sonny. Carpenter is a real hothead. 
He hates questions about Thursday night almost as much as he hates Terry McCormick's guts. Marshal Eaton said about the same thing. Evidently, Reed and Karen had a fight about Terry, and he left the party early. And could have come back later, take her home, found the body. That's a great setup for blackmail, but murder? Nah. Look at this. Terry McCormick insists that the man who fired at him is the same man who killed Hal. This is a blow-up of the bullet that killed Hal. See the striations? Barrel markings along the side. Now this is a slug that I dug out of McCormick's car today. Let me see the other one. You see the markings are entirely different. Yeah, they are. And this is from a 38, but someone else's 38. Sounds like we're looking for two men, a blackmailer and a murderer. We're going to a blackmailing. I want to see those two men meet. Well, Reed Carpenter is just a guess. Educated guess. Come on, my friend. I'll hold Terry's hand. You see where Carpenter leads you. Okay. <laughs> Down the Harbor Freeway, across the Signal Street overpass to the first dirt road. Drive down to the tanks at the railroad tracks. Be there at midnight, alone. When you see another car flash its lights, turn off yours. Get out of your car. Leave the bag halfway between the two cars and walk away. Stand with your back turned until you hear a car drive away. If you turn, you'll be shot. And this time, I won't try to miss. Time. Where's the money? You carry it. What do you need me for? If we're gonna catch this man tonight, you better be there. If he sees me, he'll know it's a phony setup. 
And don't worry, you'll have plenty of protection. I'll be in the vicinity. I hope you know what you're doing. You know why you hired me? I know exactly what I'm doing. Let me out around the turn up there. You go on ahead. You only played roles of redeeming social virtue. Get up. Hold out your hand. Are you willing to wreck an entire career for a lousy hundred grand? Oh, no. The gentleman feels that you have a lot more at stake than he does. Well, it's almost worth it to see him suffer. Your life in jail? My life? That's the usual sentence for murder. What are you talking about? Hal Jones. You killed him Friday night when you made the blackmail drop. Nobody made any drop. He never showed up. I waited up there for two hours. Well, now, that's an interesting story, isn't it, McCormick? There might even be some truth in it. What do you mean? You thought that the only other person who knew about Karen's death was Hal. When the first blackmail note came, you thought he sent it. When you sent Hal to deliver the money that night, you followed him. When he didn't go to Griffith Park Observatory, you thought he was delivering the money to himself and you shot him. And tried to frame me. You made the frame up a lot easier, Mr. Carpenter, by running around firing wild warning shots. Jones, what are you talking about? You're supposed to be working for me. That's right. You hired me to catch your blackmailer and my son's killer. Why, well, that's almost a direct quote. And by golly, I think I got the both of you. <laughs> I should have known you too old to think straight when I heard you rambling on about China and Napoleon. Where's the proof? You're looking right at it, right here. What? This little old bag full of money. Just like the other night, when Hal took it out with him. You see, 
I know this is Hal's because I gave it to him for his birthday a week ago. And how the hell did you get it back from him after he was murdered? Unless you were there. Zip up the bag. Bring it to the car. I didn't want this to happen. Believe me, Jones. Any more than I wanted to kill him. Drop it. Or I'll kill you where you stand. friend. Glad I didn't have to use it again. feel to be back in harness an old war horse like you well, that's a funny thing life was so good retirement perfect health nice ranch yeah there was something missing and now you know huh? my work and god help me that this is the way i must rediscover it through the death of my son come on i used to be pretty good you know pretty good the best in the business Oh, wait a minute. That's my line for you. Ah, come on. 